Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at one of the new um, features in Cinema 4D, perhaps even updated features in Cinema 4D 2023, and that is soft body dynamic. Uh, and while Cinema 4D has been kind of updating their uh, simulation tag, simulation engine system, whatever you want to call it, uh, I think now that it has soft bodies added, it's worth taking a look at. Uh, whereas previously, soft bodies were quite slow, this new way of doing it is significantly faster. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are in Cinema 4D. I have a simple setup, once again, a plane and a sphere. And if this sphere looks a little bit different, it's because it's been set to hexahedron. Okay, and I have adjusted the segments a little bit as well. Um, and to add the tags, we need to come here, right click on an object and come to simulation tags. Now what you'll notice is that cloth and soft body um, are now in here. Okay, cloth, soft body, if you want to count balloon as something different as well. And that's because really all three of those are the same tag. Very much how in the old simulation tags, which are under bullet, um, rigid body and soft body were essentially the same thing. So I expect them to add rigid body soon, um, since that's easier, I would think, from a programming perspective, less properties to really work with. Um, but we shall see. Uh, but that is worth mentioning. And so on the plane, I want to use a collider so that. Um, it's not affected by gravity and we can have other objects interact with it. Whereas on the sphere, what we want to do is right click, go to simulation tags and choose cloth, or perhaps you want a soft body, which we'll get to in a second, or even balloon. But I do want to start with cloth here. If for no other reason, then uh, you can do a lot of soft body type animation simulation uh, with just cloth here. If I hit play, notice how we get something that. Um, you know, kind of has some shape to it. And we can control how much shape this has by adjusting the number of segments. So if I take this down, you'll see, yeah, we do get something that's soft, that changes its shape. And if I was to put this in, say, a subdivision surface, this might give you exactly what you want for something like, I don't know, a beanbag, okay? So that is worth mentioning. And you can, like I said, control a lot of that by the number of segments. Um, I will the number of segments to maybe something a little bit higher, like 35. Uh, something else I want to point out is I do try to be a little bit more careful when kind of working with the properties here, making adjustments, as I have had Cinema 4D crash or freeze a number of times while, um, you know, trying to make changes in the middle of a simulation. So I think, um, well, for the most part, it works. Uh, if you do find it crashes on you, just kind of pausing in between changes for right now at least is the way to go. Now, since this is primarily uh, a video about soft body, I'm not gonna get in too much of the cloth properties here. Maybe I'll do a, uh, another video on that. But now what I want to get into is the balloon, okay, se uh, section. Now, if you come here and turn on balloon, notice the tag changes, and that is really the difference between the cloth tag here and the balloon tag is just, that the balloon option has been turned on. So this will inflate, and this actually gives us a pretty good looking bouncy animation. And very much like we did with the cloth when I put the sphere into a, a subdivision surface to smooth it out, um, that is a very common technique to keep the number of polygons in our soft body objects lower, and then coming in and smoothing them out after. That is less of an issue because soft bodies work so much quicker now but they will start to slow down um, at some point if you have enough of these objects or if you do increase the number of segments in your object, okay? But we can increase the pressure, which will increase the size of our object here. And then you also have the expansion time. So how fast you want that expansion to happen, okay? So once again, getting something really soft body-like without even really using soft body. So now we can switch to the soft body tab. We'll turn off balloon here and then check on soft body. And what we're seeing now is all the different holes connecting this object together. And that's what's going to determine how smooth our object is, how much or how little it bends, it deforms, okay? Um, and you can choose when those holes are disp displayed or, uh, yeah, holes. So if it's just when the tag is selected, always, or if you just want to turn them off and just focus on um, you know, your object itself. I think when selected, 
is a pretty good compromise here. Now, the most basic property we have is softness, which allows us to control, oops, that's probably a bit too much, how uh, much or little deformation we want. And honestly, if it's zero, we probably get something, okay, that's not too far off from rigid body simulation. So maybe if we adjust the, the poles a little bit, we could get something. But um, so the more softness you have, the more um, soft body like uh, deformation you get. I want to point out that all of these properties can use a vertex map, and that can be a nice way to control them and add uh, some variation to them or just do some interesting things, which we'll perhaps uh, take a look at. Target length really controls the size you're after. Um, I've seen some interesting things where you can animate this property um, to get it to say shrink wrap something, but this like I said, we'll control whether your object gets a little bit smaller or larger and really something that probably should be um, animated over time. Uh, there is tearing, but that's not something I'm really going to get into um, now. And uh, we can see how uh, it's going to be torn, whether it's because they're elongating or they're getting compressed too much. And then um, whether it's, you know, 50% of, you know, their uh, length or compression. We also can control the number of poles we have, which will also control how much uh, soft body, um, you know, deformation we get that combined with some of our other properties. So a pole is really just a line, almost like a spring, although that was more the previous system from um, one point to a different point. Okay, so the more of these you have, the more kind of uh, an accurate uh, simulation you'll get. And once again, you know, the number of segments we have can also play a part in this. So you can see as I turn this up, we really start to do this. So that's why it can be a little bit tricky working with these settings because you, you make one change to the segments here and you're getting something very, very different. All right. So once again, subdivision surface to help smooth this out. But just look how, how nice, uh, how much nice detail we're, we're getting on that now. Okay. So we can come back in here. And maybe, you know, turn down the softness a bit. Okay. See, we're getting, actually, wasn't really noticing it that much. A little bit less, perhaps. Um, but then also adjust the poles. And that, too, is giving us a very different look to this. So all these properties do work together. It is important to, you know, kind of keep that in mind. And honestly, it looks like I'm getting something very different than I was. Um, previously and probably should have hit refresh. So you can see this is what we currently have. Okay, we can increase the spread of those holes as well, which will allow them to um, connect in different ways. Make sure I hit refresh since that does seem to make a big difference now. And yeah, cool. Liking the way that looks. Um, the density will control kind of the number of poles you have, okay, as well. And that, once again, can change how this looks. All right. Hit refresh. Okay, cool. That looks really, really nice to me. And once again, we have these map properties here that we can use. Um, the shoot sides really isn't terribly important since this is, you know, a sphere. Um, if we had a more complicated object, uh, like, you know, text here, then this might make more of a difference for the, the shoot as well as the hit side. So right now it's shooting kind of from the inside, uh, the pole of this object, you know, shooting a pole to the inside of this object. Whereas for text, you may want it to shoot on the inside, but you might also want it to shoot on the outside so it would connect different parts of these letters together. Um, and so for a simple object like a sphere, that isn't important, but it might be for um, more complicated geometry here. Now, mix animation allows us to combine our animation with um, different options, uh, with our pins, with different forces. And um, I haven't had too much luck with the plastic deformation yet. It is something I'll need to dig into um, a little bit more. But, um, you know, it's going to give us more 
options for how things change their shape. And you can see it's really making quite a big difference here um, just by turning it on, um, at least the bend. Um, but like I said, I just really haven't seen too much um, difference with a lot of these or situations where they're um, useful. At this point, changing the number of segments, changing the um, softness, the number of uh, the max number of poles is really what I would focus on the most when it comes to working um, with the soft body here, along with adding in um, map. Um, and I'll come back to that here in a second because I think that's something we will do. We also have a dresser option. Um, I believe that's more for cloth. So if I turn off soft body, um, this also needs to be editable as well. That could uh, be part of it. Um, now we can come in here. Uh, I don't, let's see, it should work with soft body as well. I think it was just because it wasn't editable. Yep, that's it. So um, the biggest important things here would be initial state and fixing point. So initial state will allow you to kind of start a simulation at a given frame. Like I could have it start here. If I hit set, that's where it's going to start my simulation now. Okay, so that can be fun. Um, as well as fixed points. Uh, and that's more of a cloth thing, but we can perhaps try that here where I select some points, I hit fix points, and now those points should not move once I get out of here. Okay. So interesting that I can't get out of the point mode here, probably because of those fixed points. And like I said, maybe that's just a cloth thing. So let's clear that. Um, oh, or I just gave the tag some issues or Cinema 4D some issues for that matter. So let's go to a new scene really quick, recreate our setup. Um, like I said, the simulation tag is a little bit tricky. Um, I guess I'm quite lucky that it didn't crash Cinema 4D entirely, but it won't take us long to get back to our setup. So nothing like kind of seeing that in action. All right. so. Soft body, here we go. This is similar to where we left off. Um, we were just talking about the dresser. We also have a cache option, and that will allow us to bake out this simulation, which is gonna be important if you are gonna be um, rendering this on a render farm, um, whether a local or online one. That way, um, whatever computers are rendering it aren't calculating the information, um, they are just reading it. And so it can make your Cinema 4D file a little bit bigger, uh, it used to actually say um, how much it was making your scene bigger. But it's just going to store that information in RAM in your scene file. So that way, when you hit play, um, it may actually play back a little bit quicker, which can be useful if you have complicated simulations, um, but will also render correctly on a render farm. And you can also mix this with different horses from the simulate section here um, a tractor, um, deflector you know, turbulence, wind, all that type of stuff. Okay. Lastly, I do want to try and come in here and um, show you all what we can do with map, or at least start to scratch the surface. So let's turn the segments up here. Okay. Um, oops. And I'm not, I was wondering why I'm not seeing a difference. And that's because we are seeing the cached version of this. I'll rewind, clear scene cache, and now we'll get this. Okay. So once again, it's looking a little bit strange the way these poles are being created, though it could just be, yeah, my display, which I think is the, the problem here. Um, just confirm that since that was looking a little bit weird. See, that looks much better. Okay. So we have our soft body here. And I think I'm, no, I still have quite a few segments. So definitely seems like I get something different every time I add this. Um, but let's see what we can get uh, by using a map. Okay. So to add a vertex map, this is something else they added now in um, 2023 is that under other tags, you can now just choose vertex map. Whereas before you had to have an editable object and make a selection and then come here and do select and um, you know set vertex weight, create a vertex map that way. 
But now we can just go other tags and vertex map. And this will allow us to use fields for this. So um, now what I can do is create a field like a linear field and we can go through and add this field here. So zero to 100. And this tag will update, can be updated by any of our fields, whether it's a linear field or even something like a random field. And this map can now be used in all of the different properties that we've been taking a look at, like softness, like target length, okay, max poles, all of that stuff. So let's just start dropping this in here and seeing what we get. And this is definitely something I think we want to be careful about. So not seeing really a huge difference there. So let's keep going. Pause this, wind, drop this vertex map to the target length. Okay. Still not seeing much. And let's also just turn the holes off so we can see things a little bit more clearly. I feel like I go crazy with this. Okay. So something very different. But once again, not entirely sure what it looked like without the vertex map. So not the, the best comparison. Let's delete this so we can see what we get. So still not looking, not seeing too much of a difference. Let's keep going. Max poles. Okay, so that is definitely having a distant, uh, a difference. And when we turn these on, let's see if we can see how this is working with our linear field. So you can see um, how it, we're getting more poles at the top fewer poles at the bottom. This may be not quite as gradual as I would have liked to have seen, but um, still that is giving us something that um, has a little bit more structure towards the bottom and uh, less structure uh, up top, okay? Which is something um, we may want to do. And we could also use this same um, tag in our cloth properties as well. So adding a map in here, right? Does seem to make this jiggle or bend a little bit more. Same with perhaps stretchiness, okay? And so hopefully you guys get the idea. So that will do it for this video. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want to see and take care.